Hi everybody, it's Jessica from Chambray Blues. This is what I sewed in August. Now one of my readers suggested that I do a review of all the things I made last month and I thought it was a great idea. I didn't know that was a YouTube thing. And so this is my first ever video with the things I made from the past month. I might include a couple of other items that I made sometime over the summer. Um, I don't exactly remember when it was. It might have been July, but somewhere there over the summer I made some other things. And there are more in the, the blog that I'm not including here. I'm just including uh, my favorites for the month of August. So my theme for the month, and this is something I just started in August, was leopard print. And I love leopard prints. Um, they're great going into fall, and I picked a number of projects around that theme. The shirt, this is Simplicity 1504. This is the sleep shirt from Simplicity 1504. I made a few changes. I made my piping a little bit wider than the traditional piping to give it more of a vintage look. I added some embroidery to the pocket, I used larger buttons, and then I put this giant leopard embroidery on the back. The fabric is brush back satin, or flannel back satin as it's sometimes called from Joanne Fabrics. And it's super soft and comfortable, it's great for lingerie, and it is my favorite piece that I made. I'm going to be wearing it all winter long. That's science. So, I am launching my first ever line of patterns, and these are all going to be available very soon. Some of them are already available. I'll put the links in the comments um, so you can find the patterns if it's something that you're interested in. So this is a minky robe. It has a velvet leopard trim. It's a zip front, which I love. It has pockets and the leopard trim goes all the way down the front. It is super soft and warm and cuddly and I absolutely adore it. I'm gonna make another couple of versions in the next month or two and it was not a difficult sew, even though Minky can be hard to work with. This pattern is rather simple and was not hard to make. So if you're interested in that, uh, follow the link in the comments for the pattern. The next one is the leopard fleece jacket. So this is really fun fabric. I got this from fabrics.com, I believe. And it's just this great print. I loved the variegated colors in it. And I wanted just something really simple, out of fleece, warm item just to throw on in the evenings. Um, in the old days, we would have called it a bed jacket that you can just you know throw on over your jammies when you're running around the house. But it's got nice full kimono type sleeves. It's got a small um, collar down the neckline. And it's a shorter style. It will come in a little bit longer version as well. And then I picked up these cute little sewing labels um, at Hobby Lobby. It says, Stitch with Love. And that's really cute. I didn't have my own label yet. I will eventually, but not right now, and these you just iron on. The sleep mask. This is the Predator mask. It's a in-hoop embroidery design from Royal Present Embroidery on Etsy. I love their things. They do a great job. Everything stitches out beautifully. I didn't totally love this project though, which is why it's not on the blog. I used the brush back satin fabric, and it just didn't work as well as I would have liked. Also, my thread color choices um, weren't as interesting as the original ones that the designer recommended. So I'm gonna remake this project and at another time. Okay, then one of my other favorite pieces. This is a lightweight cotton jersey knit nightgown. I, it's all black, as you can see, which makes it super hard to photograph. Not a good idea on my part. I started working with it and I loved it, and it's um, just super hard to show in photos, and I probably won't even put it on the blog. I'm gonna make up another one in a different print so you can see it. But it has lace trim, very easy to sew on, the lace trim. 
uh, at the front, even though it has some miters here and a little tchotchke bow. And then the hem is what we call a lettuce edge hem. So it's a narrow rolled hem on the serger and um, it's just a really fun item. It is super comfortable and super lightweight and it's a great item. This is also my design. It'll be available very soon. So to go over that, I stitched up a lace cover up. So this fabric was from Walmart, $4 for four yards, I think it was. And it's very lightweight. It's a blend, rayon, nylon, polyester, something like that. I used the rolled hem for the neckline and the sleeves, and it was really easy. This pattern is Simplicity 8172. I did make it a little bit longer uh, for my own uses. I added about five inches, I think, to the body of the garment, so it, it comes down more uh, around the hip length, and then the the ruffle goes a little bit lower. So I liked how it turned out. That is an easy to sew pattern, and I will probably make more of them. Okay, then we have the leopard pajamas. I loved it, this print. I loved it in the store. I couldn't wait to try it. This is fabric from Hobby Lobby. It's 100% cotton, and I debated whether to get the 100% cotton or to get a satin leopard print from another vendor. And I kind of wish I would have gotten the satin. So here's the thing, it's easy to sew cotton and cotton breathes at night when you're sleeping. It's very comfortable to wear generally. However, this cotton is a little bit heavier than most lingerie fabrics are. And I should have known that, but I thought it would work and it really didn't. It, it's a little bit too heavy and it, it sticks to the sheets, if that makes any sense. Um, it's just not comfortable to sleep in necessarily. It's great for lounging. Lounging is great, but it's just not super comfortable to sleep in. And I'm just not super happy with the pattern either. So the pattern I used was McCall's 6659, and it's just a little bit small. It's short-waisted. Um, it's got a bust dart, which is weird for pajamas. Pajamas never have bust darts. That should have been a red flag to me, but I did it anyway. And then the other thing I did was on the pants, instead of a traditional waistband, I bought some of this uh, wide elastic and just stitched it on because I was kind of in a hurry and I thought, oh, who's going to see it anyway? That's before I knew I was doing this video. So now you know my secrets. Uh, I hate this elastic. It is itchy. It is stiff. It is uncomfortable. And I might just cut it off and start over. But then I thought about it. I'm like, well, how often am I really going to wear the pajamas? I don't think it's worth my time. So anyway, that's the leopard pajamas. This is probably early August, maybe late July. I don't know, somewhere in there. I sewed two different pieces. So my specialty is lingerie design and I specialize in patterns for plus size women. I design other things too, but that's my specialty. So the first pattern that I was working on this summer was an off the shoulder uh, Trico nightgown. So Trico is a great fabric for sleepwear. It's also really nice for the larger sizes because Trico comes really wide. You can get Trico that's 108 inches wide so for those large size patterns, it works really well because you can use larger pieces. So this has elastic around the neck and around the sleeve and then under the bust. Um, and it's got a lace detail on the hem and lace on the sleeve. It's not a difficult sew, but the elastic is a little bit wonky. I would have, if I sewed it again, I would do it a little bit differently. I was trying some different techniques and uh, I'm not real super happy with the way it turned out. I would add some channeling um, with bias binding and then thread the elastic through that because again, uh, when you're sleeping, you want things that are really soft next to your skin and you can feel the elastic here. Uh, I just used a zigzag stitch to put it on and it's just a little bit scratchy. It's just not what I was hoping for. 
So to go over that, I put together a kimono robe pattern. So this is one of my upcoming pattern releases. This was the first time that I had sewed it. Um, the fabric for this, I love this print. It's kind of a lotus design. I got it from Hobby Lobby on clearance. It was like $2 a yard. It's 100% cotton and it's my favorite robe. I practically live in this thing. So it's got nice wide sleeves. I made it a longer length. It has the pockets. Every robe I make has to have pockets. And it's just a really great, comfortable design. So along that same line, so that's kind of my casual robe. Then I decided, well, let's do something a little bit more fun, a little bit dressier. So this fabric I bought probably a year ago when I first was starting my blog, and I hadn't figured out a use for it. Um, it is a pink satin jacquard, came from fabrics.com. They still have it in stock. And I ran out of fabric. I started cutting the kimono and then realized I didn't have enough for the sleeve band or the neck band. So robes take somewhere between four and five yards of fabric, depending on how long they are. This one is a little bit shorter style, um, but then you have the, the belt as well. And it takes a lot of fabric to make a robe. So I took the fabric into Joann's and matched it with some inexpensive pink satin that they had. So that's what I used for the trip. Then to do something a little bit different, I liked the idea of doing some embroidery. And I am new to embroidery. I haven't done a lot of things with it, but I want to do more. Um, I loved this flower design. It's a peony that I found on the Royal Present Embroidery website. That's where I get most of my designs. And um, I stitched these peonies on here with what's called an embroidery tattoo. So there's three layers of fabric underneath the stitching. Uh, there's some pink and white gingham and some tulle in there. And that kind of gives it a three-dimensional look. I like the way it turned out. I kind of wish I would have brought the embroidery up just a little bit more up here. And I couldn't quite get the placement exactly where I wanted it. My machine is about 10, 15 years old. And although we can embroider really beautifully, there's some technology struggles that I have with it that I haven't quite figured out. So anyway, the whole tutorial for how to do this embroidery is also on my YouTube channel. So you can look for that. The kimono pattern will be released um, about the middle of October. The kimono, these are not kimono pants, but I wear them with my kimono um, for kind of lounging around. So this is white linen pants. They have big, deep pockets. I love that. They have a pull-on waistband, um, the yoga pant waistband as it is referred to these days. And they're a wide leg. And they're cropped just above the ankle or even a little bit shorter. And they are so comfortable. So this is another pattern design that I have in the works. Um, should be available in October as well. Um, I'm going to make these up in some other fabrics. The linen worked fabulously for this project. The linen was actually a Ralph Lauren bed sheet that I found at the thrift store for $3. And if you can find linen bed sheets, let me tell you, they are worth their weight in gold. Um, just really beautiful fabric to work with. Doesn't shrink. I mean, it's just amazing. Soft, fabulous. Thinking back, this was a little bit earlier in the summer. Fabric from Mood Fabrics in New York. It's embroidered tulle, and I just loved the colors, the shine of it, the, the feel of the embroidery. Fabulous. It is a really simple capelet over a sheath dress. So the dress is made from a scuba knit, um, very simple design, and it's really flattering on. It's perfect for uh, a wedding that we went to this summer in the warmer weather. I'll probably make um, a holiday version of this coming up for Christmas, so you can watch for that. This is my design. It's a pattern that's available on my website, and I'll leave the link in the comments 